Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. We will start the information webinar in just a couple of minutes. So sit tight and we'll be with you very soon. As we are quite a community here today, please do feel free to turn your video on so we can say hello and give you a wave. <laughs> so I'm just going to wait for another minute while we let everybody come on in and then we'll start. Hey, everyone. Hello. And just to let you know, today's um, information webinar is being recorded. It will be made available to Frontier SI partners on the Frontier SI website. So if you would like to um, uh, you can keep your video on. We will be sharing our information webinar um, <clears throat> slide deck very shortly. And then at the end of this, we will open up to questions. We would love for you to place your questions into the chat at any point in time. Um, uh, Kate will be monitoring the chat. So please do feel free to add in anything as it arises and we will deal with it as soon as we can, either through the course of the presentation or in the question time at the very end of the presentation. Uh, because we are such a tight-knit group here, we are very comfortable with you asking anything that you would like to. There is no such thing as a silly question, and we know that this is a very exciting um, call for proposals. So we'd love for you to share with us either today in this information webinar, or if you're more comfortable, over email to myself or Kate, so that we can um, facilitate this to be as smooth and valuable a process for you as possible. And so now I'd like to start off with an acknowledgement to country. I come to you from the lands of the Daruk people of the um, Sydney, uh, Southwest Sydney area. I'm aware that on this land, there have been people coming together as individuals and communities to work, rest, play, and to build and maintain a beautiful, sustainable culture for many, many tens of thousands of years. I'd like to pay respects to the elders, past, present and emerging of the lands on which that I am coming to you today and the lands on which you are all today. Indigenous knowledges are a very valuable part of the way that we operate as geospatial professionals. And I hope that you do take the time to contemplate how you can work in some of the ways of thinking and the worldviews that these Indigenous knowledges hold as you pass through the course of your day and your week. I'm now going to share the slide deck. And so as you might be aware, today we are gathered to have a look over and um, work through some of the details around a Frontier SI partner co-funded collaborative research proposal solic solicitation. This particular project looks at foundation data, spatial data modernization. The purpose of this project is to catalyze and link our government, industry and academic partners in order to activate collaboration, thinking and action around the core topic of foundation spatial data modernization. Over the course of today's presentation, I'll go through with you over a background and context to why are we doing this project and why now, what the actual proposal solicitation involves, an overview of the key three challenge areas, and then some of the specifications about the actual proposal 
process and the next steps. As I mentioned before, please don't hesitate to put in any questions that you have into the chat um, and we will work through them at either through the course of the presentation or at the very end during questioning. So the first question that we have is why do we need to modernize foundation spatial data? This modernization is a key priority for both uh, Frontier Side government partners and ANZIC members. This modernization is one of the five strategic priorities in the ANZIC strategic plan 2020 to 2024. And it is again listed as one of the 10 major initiatives. So what does modernizing spatial data actually do? Well, it allows governments to keep up with industry requirements, such as supporting digital twin initiatives and moving to 3D and 4D. But more importantly, it allows for foundation spatial data to support Australia's economic development in an accurate and correct manner to maintain the integrity and respect of the industry at large. So advances in machine learning and new data capture technologies are providing invaluable opportunities for modernization of the creation, connection, integration and maintenance of Australia's foundation spatial data. Foundation spatial data is the backbone of how our industry contributes to Australia's economy. If we modernize the creation, connection, integration and maintenance of Australia's foundation spatial data, we unlock the pathway to the future in three key ways. One, we add value. Connected integrated data sets which provide the information needed for analytics and data driven decision making at the re resolutions that they require at the sorry at the resolution at which they are required help us to unlock the value that our data can offer through the industry and the academic pathways. Currency working towards real-time access to information for challenges as they arise is very important, particularly as we've seen with case studies such as climate and natural disaster resilience. And finally, collaboration. As you know, the way forward as we work together to solve complex multi-stakeholder problems is only really possible when we get the right people together at the table to progress so that Australia is future ready. Delivering these solutions is also one of Frontier Aside's key research theme areas, as identified in the Frontier Aside 2022 to 2025 strategy in terms of foundational data acceleration. <clears throat> so we are looking to harness advances in AI and ML to improve creation, connection, integration and maintenance of foundation spatial data, alternate sources of data, such as remotely sensitive data, crowdsourced data or proprietary data that have the potential to improve FSD quality, accuracy and currency. And lastly, improved collaboration between government, industry and academia. We see a huge opportunity in this and we want to make sure that as an industry, Frontier Site is able to help partners come together to create these solutions to help Australia to be future ready. Our collaborative group has space and spatial expertise, including positioning and geodesy, data and infrastructures, spatial analytics and space advisory. This expertise can assist any sector from space to health and resources to improve location based information and increase data accessibility for improved decision support and service delivery. Frontier Aside provides the connection point, research services, expertise, technology and collaborative model for our partner network to access, develop and apply space and spatial research, uh, development and innovation project outcomes into impactful and innovative solutions. Together with our partners, you, we have transformed research outcomes into meaningful changes across several industries. I'd now like to speak about the actual proposal solic solicitation process. So we are looking to offer challenge based approaches to support efficient future ready workflows to create and maintain foundation spatial data. Frontier SI will administer the program 
with the focus on FSD modernization, as previously mentioned. And there are up to $150,000 per project available. We are seeking to co-fund a small number of projects which demonstrate capability in modernising FSDF through showcasing the role of reusable, interoperable, configurable and scalable processes that will support efficient, future-ready workflows to create and maintain FSD. If you are an industry or research organisation in the Frontier SA ecosystem and have ideas for short or long-term projects, that will deliver impactful and operational solutions for government partners through addressing any of the challenge topics which are outlined in the next few slides, we welcome you to submit a proposal. We are really interested in impactful projects that can either be immediately utilised or have potential follow-on stages. We'd love for you to talk with us about your ideas prior to or during the process of putting together your proposal. Submissions will close on at 12 noon um, AEST on Monday the 26th of June, allowing a couple of weeks between now and then. Please feel free to reach out to us and to speak with other partners that you'd like to work with. So the most important thing, right? What's in it for you? So we are hoping that with this co-funding approach, we can offer funding to demonstrate your technology and ideas towards a nationally relevant challenge. We will raise your visibility and provide you with, um, I guess, the support and the, the running of the program to help to get your ideas elevated and noticed. This is an opportunity to demonstrate and present capability, and you'll have access to validation from Frontier Size government partners to guide the direction of your workflows and processes to make sure that they are relevant and applicable to really help Australia's become future ready. In terms of key dates, <clears throat> today we're at the information webinar on Friday the 9th of June. Proposal submissions will close at uh, midday noon AEST on the 26th of June and we'll announce successful projects um, and proponents on Monday the 24th of July. After this, there'll be um, project agreement and execution, and then things will get underway for the selected projects. So I'll now hand over to Kate to run over the, the three challenge areas which we have been speaking with our government partners with. Over Thank you, Kate. You. Thank you, Roshni, and um, hello, everybody. It's great to see some familiar faces and some new people online. So um, welcome and looking forward to, to talking to you about this. Um, we had a bit of a chat as a group and as Roshni said with our government partners um, to come up with some themes. This first one is the broadest, most open one. So um, if you're thinking about something that doesn't fit in the other two, uh, this is the one to try for. Um, so this is really about looking at the interoperability and harmonisation. And I know there's people online who, who do this every day. Um, we're seeing amazing projects um, at the local government level, state level, um, and this is about how we, we create a spatial industry that enables us to share across that ecosystem. So any enabling technology. Um, so for example, um, Ivana, we did a project on together on metadata um, for training data sets for AI. Those are the types of projects that could fit under here. So how do you accelerate the adoption of new technology, um, whether that's to create uh, really detailed data for digital twins, um, whether it's to allow the data to be used differently, so data about data and, and getting that rules as code, um, machine to machine future really happening. Um, and really helping us as an industry meet the growing needs for data quality, usability, um, and that includes currency. Uh, we're seeing a lot um, from the smart, smart cities community and the IoT community about real time, uh, some discussions about what that means for our industry and how we keep up um, with those growing demands. And then accessibility, how do we share our learnings? How do we potentially codify or, or create information that then allows us to do things better now, but also to do it better again into the future? 
So yeah, harmonized data models, interoperability, ways to share processes, ways to share between organizations. And I think there's some interesting topics around new types of data governance and, and licensing as well that fit under this one. Thanks, Rush. So future transport needs, this one comes up a lot. Um, there's lots of jurisdictions and people that are doing um, amazing work on modernizing their transport data layers. And I think we're seeing lots of discussion in the community about how we facilitate more active transport, such as walking and cycling. How does a 20 minute city impact on our future transport needs, but also the rise of autonomous vehicles, um, things like public transport and on demand. Um, and even I know there's some people online who've been interested in um, the future with flying cars and, and more types of um, autonomous vehicles in the sky. So how does our industry respond to that trend? What is the data that we can provide that can help facilitate that future or improve the cities and, the, and, and um, spaces in cities that we use now for transport? So how do we create that information? How do we maintain it? And how do we ready it for quite a different future or actually the future that we're trying to create right now? Thanks, Rush. And last one, obviously, Cadasta. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about Cadasta, having worked on Cadasta in a previous life, um, but it's a really important uh, element that our industry provides to the economy. Um, so how do we make sure that we're creating that information in an efficient way and we're also creating Cadasta of the future? Um, and, and there are some amazing current projects going on at the moment about 3D data and data uh, models for Cadasta, um, but how do we demonstrate uh, a future where this is affordable across all different domains um, and has the potential for creating data in a a more automated or more efficient um, slash cheaper way. And then my other part of this one is, so once we've created it, how do we access it? How do we make it useful um, for more people across industry and society? So those were our key themes. We've, we've distilled them from a huge number of discussions, um, but do please reach out if you've got ideas. I'm happy to discuss and yeah, pop some questions in and, and we can start collaborating on them. Thanks, Rosh. Thanks very much, Kate. So I'm now going to expand a little bit on the specifications of the proposal itself. In terms of eligibility to submit a proposal, there are key, three key um, criteria. One is that uh, you are either a government, industry or university partner of Frontier SI, noting that non-Frontier SI partners are eligible to participate through projects with partner organisations. And we thoroughly encourage end users to be involved in the projects and in, in putting together the proposal, we encourage you to reach out and include them. The second criteria is to provide evidence of support and potential use from the intended end user of your project outcomes. And the third criteria is to provide at least match funding of one to one against the funding request. Diving a little bit more deeply into funding, so Frontier SI will co-fund up to $150,000 per project for eligible costs which include um, various things we've expanded a little bit down here on what sorts of activities are considered eligible. So proposals with a greater than two to one funding ratio will be reviewed favorably and the maximum project period is 18 months. So things, uh, activities that are considered eligible include translating research and development to assist in the creation and maintenance of FSD towards continuous improvement of quality, correctness and, uh, and currency, and product and service development, which build on and future-proof existing FSD creation and maintenance. In terms of the deliverables of the project, we do expect uh, that there will be clear outcomes. And in addition to the clear outcomes that we hope you propose in your proposal, we expect that you will put together a presentation and final report to Frontier SI and project partners outlining 
approach, outcomes, how you've addressed the challenge question, a demonstration of the outcomes, and an overview of the lessons learned. A key question, of course, will come down to IP. So we expect that you will clearly state any background IP, and we also say that ownership and use rights of IP developed through the project can be negotiated during contracting. Successful applicants, as I've mentioned previously, will be notified on Monday the 24th of July, and project partners will all be expected to enter into a Frontier SI project agreement, which will include payment based on master. Remember as well that we encourage you to put forward questions into the chat as well throughout the presentation. You don't need to wait until the end. So in terms of what's next, if you would like to um, bounce around ideas or get clarification around questions that you have, please do feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. I will send a follow-up um, email to you following this um, presentation, which will have my mobile phone number included as well. Um, and for now, I'll open the floor to questions. Please do feel free to turn your cameras back on at this point and unmute yourself to ask a question or place it into the chat. Rosh, I'm just responding to a direct question in the chat about the co-contribution, and Paula did clarify that one-to-one -one co contribution. Um, I would say that if you have got a great idea and you're finding trouble getting the co-contribution, this is definitely the time to reach out to one of us at Frontier SI um, to discuss. Um, we've got a really broad network, but also would love to kind of help people form projects. Don't don't see it as the first hurdle that you fall on. Um, absolutely willing to, to help people through getting what they need for a, a proposal. And similar to Kate's point, if you are curious about potential end users for your idea, we would be happy to discuss with you and um, provide connections where we're able to, to help you to grow a robust proposal. Mm -hmm. May, it looks like Glenn's looking for his unmute. Is that just wishful thinking? <laughs> you put your head close to the the screen. <laughs> well, it looks like um, it was all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, hopefully that means it's because we've done it before, um, not that, that it's too confusing. I might take a moment um, to explain a little bit more about the evaluation criteria. That um, so in the email that we sent out, it included the information pack with ha which had an overview of the challenge, but also the actual um, form to complete when submitting your proposal. So in terms of the evaluation criteria, it might be useful to hear a little bit more about what we're seeking in proposals. We, I guess, we are seeking a, a number of elements of information from you, but it doesn't need to be war and peace. So I guess to start off with a clear title summary and details of the project lead and project team, and then an overview of how the proposed project will address a selected challenge topic. We're hoping that you're able to provide an outline of the project goals, objectives, scope of work and deliverables, and through that to demonstrate that you've thought about project management and governance of the project. And ideally to be able to then showcase a project timeline of, again, the activities and deliverables and the budget associated. Lastly, we are looking for you to outline elements of end user involvement, any commercialization potential that you see, 
and how you think that the research outputs and impact could be utilised to further, I guess, the vision of the project itself. And in that, this is, um, you can see here that this is the table that is present within the document that is um, part of the proposal submission template. And again, we do ask that all projects relate to one of the three challenges that Kate um, provided an overview of before. We will consider additional suggestions of projects relating to FSD modernization, but please do discuss these ideas with us before submission. So if you have ideas, but it doesn't fit any of those three projects, don't take that as um, meaning that you can't participate. We would love to hear from you. If there is something else that you think could be relevant that you could do an amazing job with, because as Kate mentioned, these three current proposal um, challenges were sifted through from a larger body of work that we have been um, creating as we discussed with our government partners. And uh, I'm sure you might have seen this as well, but just to provide a little bit of an overview, the actual proposal submission template, it's, uh, it covers a lot of the things which I mentioned before, um, but they are fairly self-explanatory and nothing too much out of the ordinary. So hopefully that uh, does make it more accessible to you. If you have any questions about specific elements of these um, response areas, please do feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to clarify for you. Well, I think if we don't have any questions, we can um, let people get some Friday before a long weekend over here time back. Last Sorry, one. I do have a question. Uh, <laughs> I know what I answer about people's Fridays. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering if we have, um, so uh, I am Mark from in the industrial sciences group. So we have like capabilities that support, say, data quality monitoring and data integration, but we're not primarily in the um, uh, F FSDF realm. So I suppose my question would be, do you recommend partnering with other companies on this or would we submit what we think we can contribute and then you would yeah you can choose from that mark i think it's a, you've got a really interesting capability i'm sure other people on the line haven't heard about it but um it, amazing i suppose uh capability in in the mathematics behind data quality so mm -hmm. i think mark what would be good is we could have a chat with you and then um connect you with other people that are interested in the data quality aspect. I was just having a conversation this morning with someone that said communicating data quality is something our industry really has been working away on, but we haven't, I mean, I don't know if you can ever solve it, but it's it's super important as we have more ways to fuse data and integrate data. So it's a really um, important aspect of what we do, Mark. So um, anyone on the line who wants to talk to Mark about that, reach out but um we can definitely help connect you mark with some projects and make some suggestions yeah sure okay thanks, thanks for the question and on that vein as well if there's anyone who has the seed of an idea but you don't know who you might want to collaborate with you don't know who the end users might be we love at frontier to connect people that is yeah. Um, yeah. one of our key passions and so reach out with your seed of an idea and we would love to work with you to explore its potential and make it happen. Last call for questions. All right, in that case, thank you again very much for joining us for this information webinar today. We will um, pass through the link for the recording. And as always, please feel free to reach out to myself, Roshni, or to Kate, Chris, Blackstock, or Lafieve. And we'd be very happy to support answering your questions, brainstorming ideas, and finding ways forward. Enjoy your long weekend if you have one. 
And uh, thank you again for joining. Bye. Thank you.